Hello, good morning. Welcome. Hello, good morning. Or welcome to mid morning. Exciting rum taste challenge. We have two white rums. We have Bacardi Superior. Bacardi founded in 1862 in Cuba, the Spanish province of Cuba. Yes, that's right. Cuba was part of Spain until 1898 when Uncle Sugar showed up and uh, took care of it. All right. Anyway, uh, there's the uh, Royal Spanish Crest, but it is produced today in Puerto Rico, and by the, which is a U.S. Commonwealth. By the way, Puerto Rico was part of Spain, a Spanish province. <clears throat> which was founded by Columbus, Christopher Columbus, I might add, but uh, that was uh, also uh, detached from Spain with the appearance of Uncle Slugger in 1898. But, but um, this is part of the rums of Puerto Rico, and it is aged at least one year. There's a bunch of requirements for the rums of Puerto Rico, but I know one of them is that it has to be aged at least one year. Roma Puerto Rico age quality seal. That's on the back. Now you don't have to be part of the rums of Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico, rich port. You don't have to be part of the rums of rich port, but you, <laughs> if you do join that trade association, then there are certain requirements you have to fulfill. And, and Bacardi, Ron Q, uh, and a bunch of others are part of the rums of Puerto Rico. Maybe we'll look that up in a little bit. I'll show you. So here's the website. Bacardi Superior. Don Facundo spent 10 years perfecting Bacardi Superior rum. Smooth and subtle with notes of almond and vanilla. It doesn't dominate like gin or disappear like vodka. Perfect for classic rum cocktails like the mojito. And uh, it's part of their uh, carta selection the superior the gold and the black yeah okay so there we go carta superior i like it the gold i like it the black i love it premium range quattro four year age i haven't had that one yet ocho Grand Reserva Ocho, eight. I've had it. I still have a bottle. I love it. Grand Reserva Diaz, 10 year age. I, I've had it. I still have a bottle. I absolutely love it. Grand Reserva Limitada. That's a black one, boy. That's a limited black. I'd love to try it. I might. And then there's the flavored range, flavored vodka, uh, rum liqueurs, limon, lime, dragonberry, pineapple, grapefruit, banana, raspberry, mango, and coconut. And the limited edition range, the Bar Bacardi Coquito. Coquito. I don't even know what that is. I don't have time to look it up. Well, I do have time, but I'm not going to look it up. All right, so you can get on their website. I put a link down below, Bacardi.com. And there you go. You got it. You got it, man. It's produced in Puerto Rico, but it's bought in the United States of America in Jacksonville, Florida, to be, if you won't be techno. Hey, good morning, buddy, says Ghost Bios, something in Cyrillic, Russian language. Hey, good morning to you. Um, it's hard to beat Bacardi, all right? It's so good. There's a green bottle. You notice the bottle's green? It's clear, but it's actually green, like a lime green. See that? It's a green bottle. Oh, wow. <laughs> It's a little bit expensive relative to other white rums, but it's worth the price. It is worth the price. Believe me, you believe you me. All right. <laughs> now we have the competitor, the Paulo Viejo, Ron de Puerto Rico. Rum produced by Barcelo Marcus and Company, San Juan, Puerto Rico. I did see this mentioned on the government of Puerto Rico website. They were saying there's many Puerto Rican rums, and uh, they listed them. Of course, Bacardi, and, uh, and then they said Palo Viejo is popular to drink down there. 
it's not popular in the United States because I've only seen it at one store, the beverage store on U.S. Highway 190 business route in Baton Rouge, otherwise Florida Boulevard. Uh, yes, Florida Boulevard, because Baton Rouge was part of Florida. I was born in Baton Rouge. A lot of people don't realize that all of that area stretching from the Mississippi River west to Florida was part of Florida. You ever notice the line is the same, that same straight line from Louisiana across? There's a reason for that, because that was the northern border of Florida all the way across. But there were two provinces of Florida, West Florida, and then east of the Apalachicola River, East Florida, Eastern time zone, Central time zone. Okay. But West Florida was cut up. The extreme Western part made part of Louisiana. The central part made added to Mississippi and Alabama. And then the Eastern part of West Florida added to Florida. And so we know Florida starts at Pensacola, a little bit West of Pensacola today. Okay. So, that's why those Louisiana parishes are called the Florida parishes because they were part of Florida. And that's Florida Boulevard, which is like a main highway across that part of Louisiana. Okay, of course replaced today by Interstate 12, but at in the older days when I was born, back when I was born, they didn't have an Interstate 12. They barely had the interstate highways. So you wanna go Cross, you could take Florida Boulevard, uh, U.S. Highway 190. Okay, anyway, now for the geography history lesson. Bacardi. Let's look up the rums. Oh, nice metal cap. Let's look up the rums of Puerto Rico. Mm. All right. And this is a plastic cap. Oh, well. It's inexpensive. It was only $6.99 for a whole liter. I'm not joking. $6.99 for an entire liter. At When I saw that at the beverage store, I was like, I'm taking care of that. And they had a huge amount of liquor over there. That's an incredible place. Some people have to, I've read, or I should say, I've read that that's the premier liquor store in Baton Rouge. However, Coop, Ben Q Liquors on uh, Louisiana Highway 428, Perkins Road. That is that could rival it. Ben Q. That's in South Baton Rouge. The beverage store is in Central Baton Rouge. Okay, now, as you can tell, I kind of shop around a little bit. Okay, so that's types of rum, types of Bacardi rum. But let's look look up gonna matter you know clear and clear i mean that's that's it that's the way the cut goes they're clear rums but they don't call them clear they call them white or silver sounds nice and clear just like light beer sounds nicer than saying thin beer the rums of puerto rico it's a great website if you ever want to do some research boy and it's rumcapital.com, www.rumcapital, one word, rumcapital.com, Rums of Puerto Rico Home. Here's the website. Showing the flag of Puerto Rico. Are you 21 or older? Yeah. The finest times are the ones you enjoy responsibly. <laughs> that could be so. Open bar. To be the bartender and a be the bartender in life of the party learn how to craft the best rum cocktails with our recipes here sip and learn start your rum master journey here rum master i'm going to look at the block the block oh, let's see about this rum on the rocks the seattle rum festival Never heard of it. California Rum Festival, New York Rum Festival. Golly gee, I didn't know they had rum festivals. You telling me there's festivals dedicated just to rum? Shows you what I know. I didn't know rum was that big of a drink. And some people are laughing like, uh, are you stupid or what? <laughs> the rum standard, the process. Here's the standard, the standard. 
highest quality molasses. Sugar cane production began in Puerto Rico in 1775. Our rum base and most important ingredients is molasses. We're not gonna go through that whole, how they make molasses. Quality molasses are just the beginning of our process. The, I'm, I'm summarizing. These molasses are later fermented under the rums of Puerto Rico standard, constantly, constantly produce rich flavor and smooth rums. Process. Continuous distillation process is mandatory. Okay, so it has to be Puerto Rican sugar cane. Distillation columns are made of several trays. Each tray is a level of column where descending liquid meets the ascending vapors. The vapors that have been enriched with alcohol and aromas come out of the top as they cool and turn into liquid. Our top-notch distillation process, process guarantees you're having the purest and lightest rum in the world to date. So they, they have to use continuous distillation in a column. You say, well, what about copper pot? Well, that's not what they require. Age for a minimum of one year in white oak barrels. That's why Puerto Rico's law requires a minimum age and period of one year. Oh, it's the law. The fresh distillate, oh well. I could read everything, but that, okay, but that they're saying, uh, must be produced in Puerto Rico, well, that makes sense. And then here's the brands, Bacardi Superior. There we go. Don Q, Cristal. Rondi Barraito. I never heard of Rondi Barraito. Three star. Club Caribe, silver. Puerto Rican rum age, one year. Y'all might know some of these brands. Caliche, Puerto Rican rum, Caliche. Trigo, Reserva Añeja rum, rum of Puerto Rico. Trigo. Coqui, Blanco. Sabor of Puerto Rico, Coqui. That's like the beer they used to make, Cookie Beer, Cookie 900. That's a frog, right? A frog in Puerto Rico at night, it sounds like it's going, Cookie, Cookie, Cookie. I'm assuming a rum festival would have a lot of pirates in attendance. Perhaps, or in buccaneers and privateers. Okay, pirates, buccaneers, and privateers. Okay, now you would assume the Bacardi is going to be better, but then if we knew for sure, we wouldn't do the challenge, would we? No, we wouldn't. I wouldn't if I knew already. Maxwell, hey, Ron, how are you? I'm fine, Maxwell. Good to hear from you. Oh, this smells like rich, woody, charcoaly molasses, light molasses. It's like you're smelling a wood barrel, and it's kind of sharp in your nose, like, whoa. You can smell the sharp oak, charred oak. So if you're not into the woodiness, this could throw you. Wow. I hear some, they're working on that railroad, man. And <laughs> they've got equipment cars going up and down the track. And it'll say contractor, and they, that's what they do. They go around working on railroad tracks all the live long day, and they make money, obviously. This is much milder. Hmm. Do they smell similar? Not really. So this one, you get more yeast kind of thing, fermented thing, and then you get uh, um, a little wood and more of a cotton candy like um it's fluffy in the nose it, it, it i can't really describe these you have to taste them on your own but what i'm saying is it doesn't smell like the other one so this one's sharp and flinty now i feel the chilling glow all right, taste time. Um, it's a little sharp in the taste, but it's not harsh. It's 
kind of clean. Hey, clean. Where's the puppy? Um, mild, light molasses, kind of mellow. They call me mellow rum. Um, Okay, let me go over here. As you can tell, I'm not sure yet. Well, that if you're not sure yet, what does that mean? Uh, that's right. The $6.99 a liter is going up against $12.99, and that's years ago. It ain't no $12.99 now for a $7.50. Mm, we talking about twice the price for much less liquor. So you pay a lot less for a Palo Viejo but you get a lot more volume. But the question is, is it worth it? Is it worth the trade-off? Yeah, probably. Now with the gold rum, nah. I tried all kinds of gold rums. I got them in my cabinet. Can't any of them stand up against Bacardi. You tried these gold rums, these like, Budget brands, they're okay. I mean, they're all right. But you put them in competition against Bacardi Gold, uh, it is an embarrassment. It just whips them. It just beats them like a fool. The Bacardi Gold is so much better. I mean, it just manhandles them. It's kind of like the Johnny Walker Red Label Scotch. You get these other little brands, uh, it just whips them. Beats them. Kind of, it's kind of embarrassing. Even the Chivas Regal couldn't compete. Even the Buick. Cannons couldn't compete. And that's a 12 year age. And Johnny Walker Red Label whipped it up. I mean, didn't destroy it. But I found out I was surprised. I kind of pushed it around a little bit. It'd be like a football game. You say, well, Northwestern against Ohio State. You say the Northwestern Wildcats are going to get killed, you know, but they might, I don't know, they might get a couple of touchdowns. And then you find out that they only lost. 31 to 27, you say, what the heck? And then for the first three quarters, they were pushing Ohio State around. You say, what's going on around here? You know, I mean, Ohio State won as the game went on. They, their, their depth clicked in. They had better backups. But they they got a touchdown, you know, with a few minutes left to win. Where they had a minute and 37 seconds left and they got a touchdown. They won 31 27. They were losing 27 24. This is a championship team. This is a team that's going to contend for the national championship. You start to say, I don't think so. And see, and that's what's happening with some of these. Like, you know, it's supposed to be a slam dunk and it ain't really happening. But I, like I said, with the Bacardi goal, yeah, it's so obviously better. And the, the Johnny Walker red label is so obviously better than the rest. Don't even mention the Bacardi eight year and the Bacardi Diaz, the Ocho and Diaz. I mean, there's no, you can't even, and the Bacardi black. Now can black rums compete against it? Well, I've only had two black rums in my life. <laughs> I never had the Kraken. I never had the, the Red Seal from the Bermuda. Gosling's Red Seal, but I had the, uh, the, the 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 Myers is that was dynamite. That whole liter is gone. Eight ninety eighteen ninety nine a liter a liter. Myers is that was some good stuff, boy. Uh, the Bacardi Black that was a jewel. That was a jewel. Do most people drink rum straight up or mixed? Says Kyle. I would say ninety five percent drink it mixed. Tony Villegas says poor little Bacardi on. Coronavirus and boom virus dead. Oh, poor. You mean P-O-U-R, poor little. Well, that could be true. I don't know much about uh, viral technology, you know, viral, uh, what to say, uh, disease uh, theory, whatever that's called. I know the word. I can't think of it. It starts with a P. Um, Mm-hmm. Little sharper here in the flavor. A little peppery, a little sharper wood. Uh 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 
what percentage of people buying white rum do what I'm doing? If it's 5%, it's a lot. I, I would I would say no way. There's no way. There's no way it's 5%. It's probably 1% or less of white rum drinkers are sitting there challenging it, tasting it neat, and thinking on it. They're buying it and they're mixing it. Is there anything wrong with that? I don't think there is. Get on every rum website that exists and it's going to have what? Try these mixed drinks and they give you a whole bunch of ideas about cocktails. Makes sense, right? Uh, my daughter loves that. She's like, oh, I'm going to try all these. All right. Brandy. We did the brandy. Christian Brothers. Uh, Paul Masson. Uh, E&J Gallo. E&J Brandy. Uh, goes on and on, you know, and, uh, the Corbell. What, what do you notice on every one of those websites? To say, this brandy's so good, blah, blah, blah. Or Cognac, Martel, Coravassier, Hennessy, same thing. Gonna be, it's going to be a list, 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 list of this and that cocktail. Try all these mixed drinks with Hennessy. It's so good. I wouldn't know. I never did it. That doesn't mean I'm disparaging it or talking down on it. If you want to make cocktails, go ahead. I'm not doing it because I'm not interested in it. If you wanted to make a video channel, you would get way more viewership and subscribers making cocktails than just doing this, what I'm doing. People say, well, you got 11,000 subscribers. Oh, well, that's nice. If you did cocktail videos, I mean, you have 111,000 subscribers. You see what I'm saying? Without even pushing it. Assuming you did a decent video, you know, it wasn't like craziness, but you get a lot of viewers. Uh, cooking videos. I told a friend at work, I said, you cook all the time. You could make a, a little fortune, you know, making cooking videos. But he isn't going to ever do it. Um, that's where the money is or the viewership is. Con you know, videos on like how to fix a, a electrical outlet, how to sharpen a lawnmower blade, those kind of things. Not, not what we're doing here. But I don't care about views or uh, subs. Aside from the fact that I appreciate it, naturally, I appreciate people viewing and doing like here, posting comments and we talk about it and subscribing. I mean, I appreciate it, but I don't push for it. You know what I'm saying? It's not a goal. I like it. It's nice, but it's not the goal. I'm not a hustler. And I don't mind even I don't even mind people being a hustler if that's their that's what they're doing. You know, uh, if they're selling merchandise and swag and you do Patreon and you won't give them money and all that it does, it doesn't bother me. I like free enterprise and uh, all of that. I'm just saying I don't do it. And you might say you're missing the boat. Oh, well, say, say la vie. <laughs> um, your streams are entertaining and educational. Thank you. I appreciate that. That's the goal anyway. Heck. I don't even need the money. I mean, I have money. I've been blessed, you know. I mean, I can just buy what I want. You know what I mean? Like two years ago, I wanted to buy a truck, so I just went and bought it. And the guy was like, well, we could talk about financing. We got all these deals, you know. I was like, what are you talking about financing? I'm just going to pay it. I'm going to pay for the whole amount right now with a check. And the guy was like, he said, uh, hold on a minute. <laughs> he said, hold on a minute. And he came back and he said, uh, that's a good check, right? I said, go ahead and run it. You know, they can run it and it'll show the bank account. He said, we can make that deal because they were having, they were saying they had a $500 discount if you finance through Chrysler credit when I bought the Ram 1500. You can get $500 more off if you find it. So I'm just going to buy it straight out. And you should still make that deal. So when I told him I was buying it right now, I'm buying it right now, the full amount. The man come, the salesman comes back and he said, the manager said, uh, we'll do that deal. <laughs> we'll do that deal. I'm tr I like drinking straight, but what's best for the dollar? Right. The love of money is the root of all evil. That's right. I don't love money. I don't care about money. That's probably a blessing in my life. I never cared about it. 
I utilize it for basic things, but I don't care about it. My family was telling me, you don't want to be a teacher. They don't make any money. You know, public teach school teachers. That's a mugs game. You know, you don't want to do that. But I was looking at like a different picture. Benefits, time off, retirement at age 40 something. You know what I'm saying? Like I was thinking of different scenario. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you, it just depends on what you want to do. Like that old PBS television show, Trade Offs. Every, every teenager should have to watch Trade Offs. That was a brilliant show in the early to mid 80s. And it was all about trade-offs. It was all about how you would have to balance things. You know, like it was all about action and reaction. So, I mean, you could do this, but there's, there's going to be this. You know what I'm saying? Like it was all about trade-offs. Your whole life is about trade-offs. So I thought it was a fascinating series and I believed it. And so I made trade-offs, you know, when I got my career, bought this house. You say, your house is, why you want to live in that house? It's from 1951. That house is, it'll be 70 years old next year. That's not living the good life, some old house. Go, uh, uh, go find some 95-year-old lady, let her live in it. I understand that. But that was the trade-off, you see what I'm saying? Well said, craft. Okay. There is something to be said about kicking back and just sipping on fine adult beverage, sort of like a rite of passage, so to speak, makes America great, says beer, craft beer tastic. Now, that's my theory, but you you might accuse me and say you're too leisure oriented. You're leisure oriented. You just want to like do simple things. There's no doubt about that. <laughs> I can't deny it. I don't necessarily advocate it but that's my sort of slot you know and I had friends that went to high school their goal was I'm gonna get the big time I'm gonna be big you know I'm one of went work for Fox News and he's still known I don't want to say his name because I'm sure he made a lot more money than me but there's but there's like a lot of stress related stress related things like there's trade-offs like you know i don't know i don't want to get into it i did history and geography because that's my hobby i read about history and geography anyway so if i'm going to sit there and read about countries and geography anyway so if i can get paid to do it well i'll do it and students would tell me you like talking about this i say yeah i say you may hate it but I'm getting paid to do it because I, I, I'll be talking about it anyway for free. And they said, yeah, we can understand that. <laughs> I like watching someone with 10 million then being broke in five years. Oh, well, I would hate to see somebody go broke. Um, well, that was very nice. That was a very nice rum. Mm. And I would highly recommend it. So I mean, you like rum, which to me, I don't know why you wouldn't like it because it's like a mild, sweet flavor. It's kind of mellow. Rum is kind of mellow and um, kind of dessert oriented, which, which makes sense considering it's made from a sugar cane product. You know, whiskey can be a little more challenging because it's grain oriented. It's kind of harsh in a way and, and argue arguably harsh so it could be more difficult for people to get a handle on or a liking to mm. well okay this this is a very good lesson because it goes to show you that you can't always base it on price now with whiskey all right okay you got me you get some of these $6.99 a liter whiskeys and they can be treacherous. Treach, well, how you say that word? You say you drink too much rum. Okay, treacherous, treacherous. But I think there's a problem like it's using grain and you're using corn, you're using rye, you're using wheat, you're using barley of 
all different configurations and I don't know if it gets too low price, it's going to come across like a cat scratching your face with its claws. But the rums, I think, could be a little more on the safe side because you're using one one ingredient. Molasses, dark, me medium or light. Then you're filtering it through various woods. You say, well, there's the blend. There's your blend, the various different wood charcoal uh, filtering. Yeah, 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 yeah. I understand that. And then you age it a longer or shorter period of time in various woods with char levels. Uh, okay, I got I get you. But the whiskey, you know, uh, you, got too, you got so many variables. All the different grains, all the different char levels, all the different aging, right? And so it it can get dicey when you start getting really low on the budget. Have I ever had one that's like literally horrible? Um, I would say Bellows Club Whiskey is pretty close to bad. It's, it's kind of nasty, but I don't think they make it anymore. Maybe enough people realize this stuff is bad, you know? Uh, Brandy is the same kind of thing. You got all these grape varieties. See what I mean? With brandy, cognac, they use various grape varieties, not just what, like one type of grape. It's usually white grapes, but they add some red. And then they like this, that, this, that, that, this, this percentage of that, that percentage of this. All right. So then uh, we distill it, blah, blah, blah. Then we filter it, filter it. And then we filter it. Then we might be six times distilled. Then we filter it. We age it in these various woods. So then there's all these variables. So then it gets really touchy. And if you get, and some of these brandies are so street level, like it'll say brandy with, it's almost like, it's a joke, brandy with grain spirits. It's like, give me a break. You're going to take brandy made from grapes and you're going to blend it with grain alcohol and add natural flavor. And you say, well, that's for old drunks, alcoholics, old bums on the street drink that. I would believe that because why would you want to drink that? So, but anyway, um, it's just a lot of variables. I think the book, the rum could be a safer bet was what I'm trying to get at. If you might be on the safer side, like doing different rum. I don't find that there's a great, 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 great variable. Like what I mean is the, um, you know, the standard deviation, like here's the norm of what it should taste like. And I guess Bacardi would be your standard, your prototype. Like this is how rum should taste on average, right? So that'd be your baseline. And then your standard deviation for rum, I think would be like this. See what I mean? Like there's not, too many high highs or low lows, regardless of the price. I mean, you know, within reason, I mean, you could pay thousands of dollars, right? So then comparing rum to whiskey is apple to oranges. I know that I'm, I'm not comparing it to them. I'm talking about the theoretics of it. I like watching someone. Oh, I know I ain't doing much. Doing nothing means a lot to me, says Bon Scott. Right. I wish he was still around. He did too much liquor, though. Um, Whiskey, your standard deviation might be more like this. See what I mean? Like there's going to be a lot of dips and some highs. So that's what I mean. It's more treacherous. It's like you're taking a chance. So when you you pay $6.99 a liter for liquor or whiskey, I'm sorry, there's a, a good chance the dip could be much lower. And then you could say, yeah. Now, what about beer? Oh, well. Oh man, now see beer, the standard deviation could really be wild. You know, it could just be down, down, high, high, down, down, high, high. Regardless of price, although price would probably play an important point part. Uh, but I mean, you can buy some inexpensive beers that would just be an atrocity of mankind. It just are undrinkable, 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 undrinkable. Rum, I haven't found one of those yet. Brandy, I've found some that were heading towards that, but not at that. 
uh, whiskey, no, I haven't found any undrinkable ones, but uh, I would say that um, the Bellows Club whiskey comes close. And rum, the Ron Rio is, it's strange though, because when you smell it, you think this is like poison. Like you literally think you're smelling poison. But when you drink it, it's not like that bad. It was pretty dang horrendous. Compare, oh, rum prices seem to stay the same. Whiskey seems to fluctuate. I've noticed that too. So like not only is the rum standard deviation very mild, like it doesn't go high, high or low, low from this from the norm, the Bacardi. Beer would be like what? What would be the norm for beer? Like Budweiser, right? So like Budweiser would be your, your prototype. And, but beer is going to be ha ha low low. It is too many peaks and valleys. Um, and then the price does that too. <laughs> Even store to store, beer prices will wildly fluctuate in this state store to store. You get some prices that is like totally out of hand, totally unreasonable. And then you go to the next door, it's like unusually low. So it does pay to shop for beer. Rum, mm, you might spend a lot of time and effort, but you're not going to find much uh, difference. Um, all right. So anyway, I never did figure out which was which. And I think that's a good sign for Paolo Viejo. This one tastes really nice. But on the other hand, this one's not half bad. Although I think it's the Paolo Viejo. It's a little bland, maybe. Maybe. Pricing in Maryland is insane for no reason. I know you have too many regulations. We do get an excellent selection. Yeah, I feel bad, bad for Maryland because I noticed that they can't even buy beer in a grocery store or a convenience store. Beer, you know, beer. Coors Light, you got to go to a liquor store. And I was very opposed to that. Have I tried dogfish head spirits? No, I haven't. No, sorry, I haven't. Okay, so I think this is the Palo Viejo because there's a male cardinal on the fence looking right at me. He's like listening in. So you hear that little chirp. Come on. Sorry, female. Sorry, female. <laughs> so I'll know this by the by the tag. I'll know what which is which. So let's see. I think this is the um, Palo Viejo, Viejo, but I'm not totally confident in that. But I'm you know mostly confident. All right. Oh yeah, I got it right. <laughs> Bird watching with Jay, right? Um, we got a lot of interesting birds here: chickadees, sparrows, of course, robins during the cold times. And uh, in North, in the Florida parishes, get bluebirds. Bluebirds, we don't get those here, except by the Mississippi River. They have a colony out by the and the and the Batcher, but that's the uh, and the crevasse. I'm sorry, the crevasse, but. Uh, uh, final assessment. Well, hmm. it's your money. I don't know what to say. Is the Bacardi better? It is technically better in a technical sense and in an objective sense, it is better. However, in a practical sense, I would not necessarily say that it's that much better. And if you're going to do cocktails, no way. Uh uh. No way I'm paying $13 for this. $7.50. When I can pay $6.99 for this and it's $1,000. I'm sorry. I'm not doing it. I'm not crazy. Bacardi is standard. That's right. Now, if you said, you know, forget you, I'm buying quality. I'm going Bacardi all day, every day. 
I wouldn't take issue with that. I would say, you know, it's your money. You want to have the cachet and the uh, respectability of Bacardi. That's fine. And, uh, but on the other hand, you probably could save about $10, $15 a month buying the Palo Viejo. And I don't think any of your guests at your home would know which is which in a cocktail. You know, you could say, hey, let's make cocktails, show this. And they'd be like, oh, yeah, rum cocktails. Go in the back, use the Palo Viejo, make the cocktails. I don't think anybody at the party would take notice. Nobody. And that's an important point. I can't believe how cheap some of these liquors are that you debut on your channel, even after it's handled by so many people because of their three-tier distribution system. Every time it's handled, it should add cost. It does add cost. It does. So if this was pure, straight from the from the distributor, I'm getting thirsty. It's not the liquor. It's, I, I wasn't drinking enough liquid. I'm thirsty. Um, I think it would be like four ninety nine a bottle, four uh, uh five fifty a bottle, five fifty a bottle. But you know that's the system at hand. The government protects it. So um, it's six ninety nine a liter. That's still incredible outrageously cheap right where can you buy liquor right where can you buy liquor for 6.99 a liter there aren't too many places so yeah it's a real winner palo viejo is a real winner and i'm not just out here floating out in la la land with no nothing to back me up i mean i got the government of puerto rico saying this is a popular product in in the country and so apparently it is okay so that's that uh, nothing tomorrow aside from Wild Card Wednesday, and I'm telling you right now, I'm bringing cold 45 malt liquor. Thursday, going to do the uh, Scotch Taste Challenge. Won't be any kind of challenge. Save yourself some time and effort. Don't watch it. Friday night's going to be uh, Fandango Friday. I'm going to do another. Uh, I'll probably do uh, rum. Do the Castillo Silver versus Palo Viejo. That's going to be a tie, straight up tie. And uh, Saturday morning, do another Scotch challenge. Sunday morning, another Scotch challenge, God willing. And then, uh, then we'll shift gears, you know, put it in a four-wheel drive and go into Canadian. Oh, I keep saying that. Bourbon. I've got the Jim Beam uh, repeal batch. So that'll be fascinating. I think you might hate it, but I think it's going to be great. Great, great series. All right. Thanks for watching this video production.